first on the agenda is Billings Park Commission interviews. Is uh, Jacob here? Or, uh, do you want to come on up to the chair there? I'll plug it in. Bill. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Oh. Yeah. That's cool for it. <laughs> All of a sudden, I can't hear you. We aren't saying anything. Oh. <laughs> I was saying you look very tanned. Oh well, <laughs> I'm broad. Hi, Carrie. Hi. Do you guys? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Do you guys want to? Do you, do you guys want to go ahead and start, or do you want to wait for Joe? We can start. Yeah. I think. Okay. I'll call the meeting of the select board to order it May first. Second. Second, whatever date there is, at uh, six thirty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'd like to call the village trustees to order uh, for this joint meeting at six thirty-two on Tuesday, May second. Start. Um, can you hear me okay? Can I have the oh, yeah. so. um, so for us, for the select board is the EEI loan. Um, as requested at the last meeting, uh, the finance committee representative met with myself and Joe Swanson and went over a present value of money. Um, the determination was the 10 year loan at this point has a better valuation long term. Um, so that was kind of one of the questions hanging out there before the site board wanted to vote. Um, with that said, it's just still the same parameters of the loan. Um, so it's kind of up with the, to the board, which way they want to go with the 10 year loan or the 15 year loan. Um, as a reminder, the 10 year loan is about $20,000 more per year. Uh, the 15 year loan, you pay about $100,000 more overall um, at the end of the day. We have the money in the budget for the 10 year. For the first year, yes. Yeah. I accept the terms of the tenure. And they fixed the document that they sent you? Yes, it's yes. I think the motion. Okay, the motion's made and seconded to accept the tenure loan from DEI. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two ayes, one absent. Um, up next, we have the, the audit. Um, we have the village audit first on the agenda. Are we doing so village town? Okay. Yeah, I'm going with village first. Okay. Um, so, so with us um, is Sarah Kimberly, who's uh, the auditor of the town and village users. Um, so before we get into it, I just want to thank him for all his hard work with us over the last um, year, year and a half. Um, I've only been here for three months, but I've e emailed him numerous times. Um, for advice and support, and he's graciously responded in a timely fashion. So thank you very much. I want to thank Zoe Parent, uh, who did uh, with, with Tyler um, over the last year um, for getting everything in and making sure that the audit is as good as possible. Um, with that said, Tyler, the floor is yours. Thanks, Aaron. Um, yeah, nice to see everybody here. Uh, you should have two two documents uh, audit related for the village. Uh, one of them is just a, a short little three page. Uh, we call it a governance letter and it just kind of highlights, you know, some of the highlights from the year that happened on the village audit. Um, overall, I think things are going in the right direction for sure. Um, just thinking back to how the year went, Zoe uh, utilized um, uh, some, some outside services uh, Sarah Macy comes to mind among others and I think that was a great great help in getting year-end schedules um, reconciliations squared away so that definitely showed it's being a very good positive um, overall 
there were still a few audit adjustments that we proposed uh, during the year. Nothing, nothing crazy. Uh, they, they, they're pretty consistent to last year in terms of what we did propose for this year. Uh, it was in the area of the, the permanent fund, just getting some activity trued up in there. Um, inter funds and transfers. There's a lot of inter, inter funds and transfers uh, here, especially with the capital reserve funds. So just getting those reconciliations to all tie out. Um, there were just a few adjustments there. Uh, the Vermont Municipal Employee Retirement System, um, that multi-employer pension uh, plan, there, there is some activity in there uh, that gets reported every year. So there were a couple of audit, adjust, uh, audit adjustments there. And um, I think pretty much the only last significant audit adjustment was uh, there was some use of the ARPA money that the village uh, voted on. And um, for whatever the reason, it simply didn't get reflected in the books and records after the village had voted uh, to utilize the ARPA money needed to uh, eliminate the general fund deficit at the end of the year. So there was an audit adjustment there. And uh, you'll see uh, the financial statements and notes um, in the back of that report. There's a report on internal control over financial reporting, and you will see a finding on on that, just the fact that the village trustees approved the use of ARPA funds to eliminate a, a deficit, and it just didn't get reflected. So there's an audit adjustment that was proposed for that to simply reflect that. We didn't really have any difficulties, um, you know, dealing with management during the audit. Um, as always, you know, is always very, very entertaining to work with. Uh, we're responsive. We, uh, a lot of emails back and forth. There's a lot of stuff here um, with the audit. And uh, I think that pretty much highlights what I would talk about with the village. Um, no deficits in the village, so that's good news. Um, yeah, so any questions, uh, be happy to happy to answer them. And, and then when folks are ready, I can move on to the town and I can dive into more details here with the village too. I just really went, went over the highlights for the village. And I just speak to the finding quickly. Um, yeah. I believe the trustees know there's a miscommunication on when the vote actually happened, when it was voted on, um, and then that now got translated to the accounting department after that. That's kind of what the little delay happened. There was some miscommunication on when the vote actually happened, and then that information being transferred to the accounting office so they could do the transfer. Uh, once we realized that the transfer had not happened, uh, Zoe and I worked on it and had it done within the day. Um, so it was just kind of that miscommunication that happened, unfortunately. Bill or Brenda, do you have any questions or comments? I don't know if that was Bill. Bill, did you just try to say something? Yeah, do you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah, now we can. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, yeah. No, I have no questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't have any questions. All right, do you want to open up to the... Yeah, uh, are there any questions or comments from the public about the village audit? Okay. Select board, do you have any questions? <laughs> I have no questions on the bill of Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you, Tyler. Thank you. Appreciate all your work. Yeah. And Zoe, thank you for all of your work as well. Okay, so for the town, um, you'll see a similar similar set of documents as you did the village. Um, there's just a quick three-page um, governance letter for the town. Going over highlights and obviously um, the audited statements, the notes, the auditor's report, report on internal control. Uh, I'll just start with the with the three page town governance letter. Um, yeah, again, I mean, you know, the two are so intertwined. So what we saw in the village kind of correlates to what we saw in the town. Obviously, the town's more involved because there's a lot more going on. Um, but overall, I think the town audit uh, did go smoother. Uh, than in years past, for sure. Again, you know, the utilization of um, some outside uh, professional services like Sarah Macy, uh, Cynthia from Nemrick a little bit, um, you know, just kind of helps get those year-end schedules squared away, audit adjust or not audit adjustments, but client adjustments done before the audit. Um, there were some lingering entries that came in after year-end, but, you know, it's kind of an, it's kind of an inevitable thing, you know, you, a vendor sends out a bill way late or something like that. 
Um, so for the town, there were about 16 audit adjustments. Um, and, you know, in years past, there have been more audit adjustments than that. So it's nice to see that number going down. So that's good. In terms of what was adjusted, um, again, the permanent fund, just, um, you know, the, the, the books and records of the permanent fund are tracked by, you know, an outside trustee. And aren't regularly getting into NEMRIC. Uh, that is getting better, and we did see improvement on that in the 22 audits, so that was great to see. So there were just a few things that we, we had for audit adjustments there, just to true things up. Uh, again, there's a lot of inner funds and transfers, same thing in the village, just going back and forth between capital reserve fund and the general fund, for instance, sewer fund and the capital reserve fund. So there, there were some entries there just to true up activity. Um, again, the, the VMERS pension plan, there were some adjustments there to just get that activity lined up with the reports to state issues um, for net pension liabilities and other, other, other amounts. Um, and I think that pretty much highlights the audit adjustments in the town. Um, you will see when you're looking at the town's financial statements and the government-wide statements, there was a restatement. Um, simply due to uh, Zoe and, and Sarah and Macy going through the asset depreciation schedules as they worked it up for the audit and they found some assets that, you know, they should have been on the schedule and they weren't, they got expensed in prior years. Um, so just a restatement to just get those on as uh, assets instead of showing as expenses in prior years. So again, you know, it's kind of, kind of showing that that outside help is really, really helpful for Zoe. It just helps boost up that accounting horsepower, if you will. Um, no difficulties working with management. Again, Zoe, uh, very entertaining to work with, uh, you know, always, you know, responsive. So that's been good. And um, you will see a material weakness in the town. Um, at, the, at the back of the financial statements, you'll see a report on internal control and there's a material weakness there. And that relates to the monthly bank reconciliation process. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the town. It kind of all starts in the town and then it kind of flows out <laughs> to the sewer funds of the village. Um, so that finding is really just kind of highlighting that um, when we looked at some months in 2022, I think like from January to June, January through June, we saw some monthly differences um, in the bank reconciliation. And, um, you know, at times they were, they were very small, at times they were on the larger side. Um, so the, the bank rec would, you know, it would get prepared and that difference just kind of stayed there. It really didn't get addressed. Um, moving forward, we're simply recommending, you know, that those differences get squared away. Um, you know, the month that the bank reconciliation is being done, really to just help pr provide, you know, better accuracy of the books and records, just to really know everything that's going on activity-wise. So that's our recommendation there. Um, just, you know, when that monthly bank reconciliation is done, if there's a difference, um, you know, it really needs to get squared away uh, just for best practice type recommendation. So I think that was really probably the, the biggest thing we found. Um, other than that, nothing, nothing really to, to highlight on. I can definitely go into more details uh, if people have questions. Um, so yeah, any any questions? I would say go ahead and uh, I can take them now. The, what does the reconciliation, the bank reconciliation, does that? Um, it's not, um, you see that it's got, a, a, you say that it's a difference, mm -hmm. but um, this is not a very, uh, um, yeah, so when we're looking at the, this, this, this is, Really, the bank reconciliation for the main general fund account. Okay. So it's the it's the main right. checking. Okay. Everything's going into yes. it. A lot of village stuff too. Okay. Um, yes. In fact, all of the village cash is in this account as well. 
and it's simply shown as a do from town account if you're looking at the village's financial statements. Um, so again, it's town and village cash all going into this account. Um, and then, you know, we're looking at the balance per bank. And then we look at the balance that Nemrick is saying, the general ledger. And, you know, they're different. And they're going to be different. They're right. outstanding items. That's right. They have your outstanding checks, outstanding deposits, you know, whatever have you. Even factoring all all that in, at least per the bank rec report, there was still a, there's still a difference. Basically, you know, from an audit side, we don't know what it was. Um, for for June, it wasn't a large amount. I think I think it's about eight thousand dollars or so um, at the end of June. Uh, it's not it's not a material amount, but at the same time, um, it's a difference and. You don't really know what it is. Um, so that's why we have the finding in here that, you know, you, it really needs to get squared away uh, just month to month. And, you know, the minute there's a difference, you know, address it then, because if you could let it go, it's just going to snowball. So there's just basically some activity that came into the bank or went into network that just didn't, you know, connect with the bank yeah. or vice versa. Yeah. But it's, it's a difference, but it's not. Crucial? No, it's it's important, and and that's why we have it as a finding here. You know, it really needs to get addressed. Um, that's kind of part of the bank reconciliation process. When you do a bank rec, you, you need yes. to balance between well, the bank yes. and general ledger. So, but with the the amount of funds that it's don't it don't think that um, it's oh, okay. No, fair point. I mean, uh, I'm just looking at the finding now. So from January 2022 through May of 2022, uh, at the end of January, there was a difference of zero. It balanced. Great. At the end of February, it did not balance. It was off by about ninety thousand um, dollars, you know. And then month to month, and then at the end of May, it was three hundred eighty thousand um, dollars. That's a big number there. At the end of June, I think it was more like eight thousand. But at the same time, these monthly differences, um, you know, it's you really want to get that squared away. Because there could be activity that's simply not getting reported. You don't want that. That's not going to look, you know, if you if you're looking at your budget to actual reports, um, and the bank rec isn't balancing your financial information, it could be inaccurate. You could have expenses there that aren't being shown. Yet they're there. If I remember correctly, this has been a concern of the auditors for a few hours now. Okay? It is, yeah. This is really this issue has been reported in the past. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, there are a number of ways you could go about it. Um, but um, maybe, you know, it, it would it, it might require somebody like a Sarah Macy coming in and squaring it away, just getting it squared up and then and then moving on from there. Uh, just to get it up to snuff. Um, that's one one route you could take. Uh, obviously, Zoe, she could dive into it, um, you know, see if she can identify it all and and get it back down to zero and then you know, keep it reconciled moving forward. That's another option. Um, but it'll just be good practice. And that I to say too, we actually after the after the audit, we we ended up diving into things, finding things. Um, when there's transition, it's very difficult. There's duplicate things happening. You know, we have um, different things happening. There's planning and zoning. When Corey came, that was a change. Every time we make a change, it makes it really difficult for the reconciliation. Because um, not everybody is quite sure where to put things. And when they don't know where to put things, I don't know where to find things. Um, so it's nice that we're kind of leveling, leveling off. Um, you know, we we had some deposits that were very delayed. There are just other things. So it'll be really nice. I mean, and I will tell you too, for me, 
this April was the first time that I felt fairly level with what I do. We had like 33 turnovers in staff. Part of my job is HR, and that makes it really difficult to concentrate on it. So it's, I'm looking forward to some of those changes and things that um, Eric and I have talked about to allow for this job to be a job. Yeah, that's a great point. So, you know, now that Eric's here, I mean, you know, you've, you've got you've got some some more accounting horsepower. So maybe Eric, he could just square it all away. You know? I mean, I'm gonna go. Canadian, right? <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so there's another option. <laughs> yeah, it is just nice for the town to to have leveled off. It it really is important for everyone. Thank you. I have a question. Can you explain the undesign undesignated fund balance to someone, what that means to someone with no accounting background? I think it was like 1.2. Undesignated. Um, so it it's called unassigned. Um, if you're, if you want to like, you know, uh, the terminology, but all it is, is it's just, it, it, it's, it's fund balance that um, hasn't been touched by the voters. Uh, committed by the voters. That's what they would they'd call, you know, something that the voters, uh, you know, they would say the voters commit something, the board assigns something, um, and then you have restricted where like a grant, you get grant money, and the grantor is telling you you can only use the money for this. Um, you wouldn't have any of those type of restrictions, assignments, anything. So it's just money that's there that hasn't been touched yet, really. So it's money like sitting actually in a bank account that's on a Covered by any right. restrictions, right? And but, but where, how do we get that much money? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've, our budget's always pretty tight, so I'm just confused where that money has come from. So sometimes it could be more revenue came in than budgeted for. So sometimes if you budget, that's a lot. That's a big number. And it also could be the hill to speak to it, but could be over a number of years. I, mean, I don't know what the fund balance was three, four years ago, but it can grow if it's not assigned or spent anywhere. But you can. Yeah, yeah, I'm just looking at it. Um, so on page, I'm just looking on page 19. Um, the general fund fund balance started at 4.5 million. A good chunk of that was um, the bond that the town got for the ESP. Mm -hmm. So I want to say there's a lot in there that relates to the ESP bond. Um, but I want to say even even at the end of 21, there was still a bit of of unassigned money. It, it wasn't it didn't show up as unassigned because what had happened is the town had had paid for some ESB costs and they hadn't yet utilized the bond funds yet. So the bond funds were just still shown as separately being you know restricted because they're in a separate account. The town has to make a formal request, you know, has to get approved to get the money. Um, so I think it it originated a little while back, um, but it's just slow accumulation of revenues being over expenditures or expenditures being under budget, uh, some combination of that. So, so I, I guess the simplest question mm -hmm. for all to understand is, does that mean that the town today, we wouldn't do this when in theory, could spend $1.2 million on something and have no negative consequences budget-wise because that money is unassigned? Or is ARPA funds sitting in there? Or is any money from the ESB building sitting in there? It's all money that has accumulated over time from lower expenses, higher revenue, et cetera. Right, yeah. And um, if you look on actually page, page 38 would be a better page to look at. Um, you can see the general fund, there's a column for the general fund, and actually the BSB money is already, up, or is still up in the restricted line. Yep. Um, so that represents, that million, million, uh, 8,205 represents the amount that's still left in that ESB bond with the cash account, if you will, that has to get requested um, by the town to get. But yeah, unassigned, um, right down at the end there, 1.266 million. And that would include the COVID money? Um, 
You know, there was ARPA in the village. I don't have about 250,000-ish, give or take. Now, had that been received in 22, or was that 23? Was that received in 22? 20, yeah. Should have been two different payments, right? I just can't remember if it was 21 or 22. Yeah, but well, I mean, it was, yeah, what was 23? Yeah. Yes, it was at least last year. May I ask a question before you all get carried away with 1.2 million? This is also a question being asked by a non-accounting person, but on page 21, it suggests that we have a negative, if I'm reading this right, we have a negative variance against the original budget of 2.3 million. Is that correct interpretation? Yeah, so that's saying, you know, um, general fund revenues, or 7.2 budget at 6.9. <laughs> so general fund revenues were about 300,000 over over budget. And then um, expenses were, were much higher. A lot of that is due to the ESB building. Because um, you got to remember in 2020, in FY21, the ESB bond of 4.5 million was shown in revenue. So now the, the ESB costs are just showing up and the revenue isn't there. The, the revenue was there in 21. So that's partly why it, it, there's such a big increase. So before you spend unassigned, um, I'm just treating this like a housekeeping budget, but before you look at an unassigned budget, do you not have to match your app, your your everyday P&L budget so that it comes out at zero? Or where does that 2.3 million come from? Well, 2.3 million is simply the um, the excess of expenditures over revenues. And, like so, said, and where's it going to come from to be to net out at zero? Well, well, you have the ESB bond. So theoretically, when you took out 4.5 million for the ES, for the ESB project, you budgeted and said, okay, the ESB building is going to come in at four and a half million. I think you'd run into a problem there is if the ESB building goes over budget. Because then you dip into that unassigned general fund fund balance. So, you know, like we're just saying with the, that 1.2 million, just, you know, just obviously, yeah, it's there, it's unassigned, but at the same time, you know, if anything goes over budget, <laughs> that's where it's going to come out of. So, the, the, the so problem, I, sorry. Go ahead, John. No, if I just I, wanted I, to go back to the. Go ahead, Susan. Why don't you finish, and then I'll come back to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could, to could we just, yeah, could we just focus on the unassigned balance, and we'll get to yeah. Joe's question. So I we still just want to know about the ARPA funds, and I want to make sure that that isn't included in that 1.2 because I don't see the ARPA funds anywhere else. The ARPA money. It looks like there's three hundred eight thousand um, dollars. It's not in fund balance. It's it used to be in a liability, but then um, there's some additional classifications that you have on the balance sheet. So it's in the deferred inflow of resources section. There's an unavailable revenue grants line of 308,193. Okay, do you want? Uh, I'm looking at page um, page 16. The uh, second page 16, not the first page 16. Yeah, the yeah, the town sixteen. The village. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just scrolling. I'm just, just looking in the detail to double check, but I'm I'm pretty sure, and I can obviously, if I can't find the answer right away, I can get back to you guys. Um, but I'm pretty positive that is where it is. So it's not even in fund balance. It's just shown um, in that unavailable classification. Think of it as a liability. Um, you know, there are stipulations there. If you didn't use it for whatever the reason, who knows? Maybe you have to return it, but Theoretically, you guys are going to utilize it all, um, but that's where it is. You come with the three hundred eight one ninety three. Yes. So I think the upper funds were for a thousand. 
-hmm. and they hadn't been allocated at all in FY22. So I guess that's our confusion. Mm -hmm. that, that, if that's the Arbor Fund, that should be 600 something thousand dollars. Yeah, it would all depend on how the payments came in. The state. It did come in in two payments. Then. Yeah. Okay. But it should all have been by FY22. Yeah. Not on the town side now. And you can. Yeah, no, it is. The 308 is the ARPA. So the town got what we do as part of an audit, uh, uh, as part of the audit procedures. We go onto the state of Vermont website and we pull up the payment report and the state details all the payments that they made to the town. So the village or the town got a payment in September of 21 for 200,000 and change. And they got another payment in August of 21 for 107,000. So that's the 308. 193. So that's how much ARPA money was received by the town in 22. So that's that number. Okay. So where is the 600? So we got money that came in at 40, half, half, correct? What's that? That's, that's about half of what? Yeah. With the other money would have. So where's the, where's the 600? Would that would have come in at 21 potentially? I think. No. We set up the Dave Green set up the portal with with the feds in twenty two. So I don't think we received any money before that. So maybe the rest came in twenty three. I think the portal is a, is a different. Thing. I think the portal was what he was required to do in order for them to submit the state to submit the money to us. No, you you had to request yeah, the money. The portal was the reports if you did any spending okay. as well. Yeah. Yeah, the, he did the portal so that we could do the kind of unlimited, open ended. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thing. But I thought they didn't send us money until after because no, it was it was beforehand, and I only remember that, that because we didn't get ours set up until like the last six months. Because right. It was a problem. So we got two checks. I mean, I remember the village got okay. two checks. Yeah, we, okay. I think we got two checks too, or hopefully three. Three. Like somebody's got to call the state of Vermont. <laughs> is, is on the portal, does that go back to 21 then also for what the state reports expenditures to the town? I, I just looked back at um, 21 and I don't see it. So it looks like it's just these two payments so far. Um, we were, it, it's two, well, two, the, the award yeah. was to the tune of 650. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the disbursements. Yeah. In terms of disbursements, I only see these two two payments totaling the three hundred eight thousand. So maybe there's still money that you guys just simply have to request. Um, you just send it. Yeah. I'll certainly follow up with Zoe on that and see where the other two. So, so if the one point two is not opera funds. Um, you're saying that's money that's completely unassigned that the town could allocate right any way they want to. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's 308. Like I said, if you're looking on the uh, statements, you'll see it. Uh, page 16 in the town report. In the general fund, there's an unavailable revenue grants line. That's where it is. So it's not even in the input. Okay. I think Zoe's back there looking this up now. So. If we want to have the Jill's question, we can come back when Zoe has, if, if Zoe can get an answer. Okay. So John had a, yeah, so John, sorry, you want to go back to what you're talking about? Well, well I think this is uh, maybe, I mean, Jill, this Jill may partially address your question, but it may not. Um, I think what, hmm, what I struggle with it, it, when I look at this audit is, um, to try to figure out like how we're doing. I don't mean process wise. I'm, I'm sorry, by the way, I have a really bad cold, not COVID. <laughs> so excuse my voice. Um, now the audit is not supposed to be our financial reporting system. Mm -hmm. We really have another one. I mean, we have day, monthly reports, but we can't, I think the select board and the trustees and certainly people with financial experience and so forth can't look at this report or town 
monthly reports and figure out whether we're doing okay, whether, uh, and that's not the fault of these reports. Th this report is not supposed to be a management report a answering questions about how we're doing. It's supposed to tell us, are our accounts accurate? And it's supposed to do it in a way that's consistent with municipal accounting. And I'm sure that this report does both of those things, that the adjustments that Tyler talked about to, to make sure that the accounts are accurate uh, and then to put, put them into proper municipal accounting forms, which are done here on 67 pages. But we need to develop, and the, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because I want you to remember at this moment in time, if you are all confused, as I am, because you can't answer some questions that are also important, not just the questions that this report answers, which again is municipal accounting and um, and the accuracy of our accounts, which is important. But it doesn't, it's not, not intended to, and it does not answer questions like, um, you know, was our financial performance good or bad? Um, is it getting better or worse? Um, are we in good shape or bad shape for the future? And and we, I think, in the past have relied on the audit to try to give us whatever information we can to answer those kind of broad questions. But the audit isn't designed to do that. This is a good audit. You know, it's clear, and Tyler and the, and Zoe are doing what they're supposed to do. But we need a financial reporting process if we are going to want to answer those questions. Can we, do we have the right amount of, did we end the year on budget or not? And if we're 2.5 minutes, gets to Jill's question, if we're $2.5 million off of budget, is that because of a simple thing like we received, you know, we received the grant for the building on, on the last day of the fiscal year and we spent the money on the first day of the next year, in which case the 2.5 million is just a timing issue. Or did we spend two and a half million dollars more than we thought we were going to spend, which case we might be or might not be in deep trouble for the future. So I just want to highlight the fact that if you're all sitting there trying to mm -hmm. figure out, did we do OK this past year, which, by the way, ended nine months ago, which is so it's it's not really relevant. We can't we need to answer the question during the year and at the end of the year, not nine months later. Again, not the fault of the of the audit. It's not designed to do that. But I just want you to remember, if you can't answer those questions and if you feel as a select board and trustees that you need to answer them. I think as a finance committee, we would like to be able to help you answer them. Then yeah, we're going John, to need something other than the audit. So I just yeah, want to make a comment. Yeah, John, if I, if I could, I think there's a, a simple answer to this and then a large complicated answer. Uh, the simple answer is, you know, at the end of the year, if you end the year not in deficits, you consider it a good year. And that's that's check one. Um, the, the other, the longer answer is, I think the Woodstock has to decide how they want to value financial health because there's many ways you can do that. Some towns love to have debt and use debt and they'll go into massive debt to pay for the things that keep tax, tax rates low. Some towns want to have um, a very high unrestricted cash balance at the end of each year to have as their, and that's what they strive for. Some towns want to keep taxes very low or have taxes that are set rates. Um, so it's probably a larger conversation, you know, with the boards, with the finance advisory committee of what Woodstock wants to consider financial health and then put things in place to kind of measure that. So it's, prob it's, it's probably a bad logic conversation that we can have. I think that's a good way to think about it. Thank you. And I think uh, Zoe got to have more information about the uh, opera funds. Yeah, she just gave me um, a report here and it looks like the other two payments did come in at the start of fiscal year 23. Okay. Uh, one came in in August of 22 and the other one was in October of 22. So that would explain why you're only seeing half of it in these statements. Perfect. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Zoe. I had one more question. Sorry. Huh? Um, the audit came in a lot later than we had expected, yeah. and I just want you to address why that was. Was that your end, our end? Why was it? I think we. I, I remember being told we did it in November. <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there were a lot of things. Uh, a lot of things going on. So I think just to recap. Um, you know, we started the audit in September, I believe. Um, started looking at started looking at things there, and then um, 
we got a lot of late adjustments. And back in January, um, we there, there were enough late adjustments to say, all right, let's just get a clean trial balance and we'll just reference to the new one. So that was in January. So then between January and these report, this report date of, let's say, Mar end of March, March 23rd, right? There was, you know, just kind of shoring that up, uh, getting the permanent fund matched up. Um, so it was, you know, both on, you know, client end, our end, just trying to get the time to, okay, when's it going to be right? You know, just matching thing, matching schedules up essentially to then finish it. Um, you know, I think moving forward, you know, to make it more efficient, and I don't know, somehow have a trial balance that's, you know, uh, done with, you know, adjustments on the client side that we can just take it and then immediately just, um, just kind of go down the list and not have to worry about late adjustments coming in. Uh, that's a big one. Obviously, you know, on our end too, you know, we, you know, when we did get the information, you know, we were scheduled elsewhere. Um, so it just kind of dominoed uh, more or less. I think that's what caused it to span as long as it did. Um, and then on, on, on my end too, staffing was, was one for sure. Uh, we found a CPA, I can't remember when, uh, last year or so, but the audits that we had didn't stop. So we were, we were a little thinner as well. So it was a combination of a lot of stuff. Does any other select board member have a question or anyone in the audience? No. Oh, Jill. Jill, Jill and maybe John. Jill, you want to go first? Yeah, Jill, you're on mute. My questions are about the permanent fund. I'm the yeah. person that keeps the records for most of the permanent funds. And there are a couple of errors here. They're very, very small, but it's interesting. I th sometimes I think it's easier to understand on a small scale. So there are two checks that were written by the permanent fund expenses that are not here, so they're not recorded. And there is a fund that doesn't exist that's been named. So the values of the funds that do exist are undervalued because the money's in something called the common fund. And I think that the, the perhaps the bigger issue is, so I'm the person that keeps the records I gave all the information to Zoe on July the 2nd. Nobody's talked to me until the, the uh, nobody's talked to me except to find one record that was um, missing. So I provided that. And then I see it published and I see errors here. So I think that one of the things we need to work on is a process to make sure our communications are improved so that um, there are not these simple errors in the audit because they've already been caught internally. Yeah, Jill, I just want to address the transfers. Um, you're speaking of a $3,000 transfer and a $1,500 transfer, right? Yes. Yeah, those are actually there. Uh, the reason you don't see them sticking out separate is because of that common account um, fund, if you will, or you know, column there for the, uh, for the common. Um, Cash moved into that common account, and the cash moving in is is acting as a transfer within the permanent fund. So that's that's why you're not seeing the three thousand and fifteen hundred dollars. So Tyler, I, I think we need to talk about this more because there's no such thing as the common fund, and three thousand should have come from the cemetery fund, and we need to show that. I think. Yeah. Um, well, what I'm just trying to tell you is that transfer is there. That uh, three thousand is coming out of the cemetery fund. And then there's the other $1,500 coming out. So when you combine those two with the amount out of the Rockefeller funds into the general fund, that totals your 243 or so transfer into the general fund from the, from the permanent fund. So the money is there. And I think, I think you raised a good point with presentation. Um, the, common, the common account, don't show it separately. Well, it doesn't show exist. It. So how can you show it? It's a separate bank account. So the cash, I believe, was just shown in there. I'm just scrolling over to the page now. Um, Did you? Uh, I want to go to page. 
59 and 60. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, so you'll see the cash is getting shown in the common fund. And then the other funds are just showing the investment for their, their investment portion. Right. Yeah. And really the cash in the Mascoma bank account is shared between all the accounts. There's no such thing as the common fund. There happened to be an, an instrument called the Mascoma bank account where we keep cash that we need. Mm -hmm. And there's, and there's money in Vanguard. So the way it's presented is quite misleading to somebody who wants to say how much money is in the cemetery fund. And they look at this um, total fund balance, which is, no, inaccurate. Well, it sounds like you'd have to take all of you'd have to you look at these, <clears throat> these two pages. Um, the last, the second to last column, the endowment fund. Obviously, leave that out because that's a separate, separate pot. But include those others and then combine them, and that would give you a more representative. So number, the total number, total number. Yeah. The combined number is fine. It's just the allocation between the funds. Yeah. I'm talking about very, very small things. Yeah. But the principle is um, it's not uh, filling. It's done differently this year than it has been done other years. Mm -hmm. And the person who knows what they're talking about was never consulted. So I just think we need a different process. A uh, question actually for everybody. So when these drafts were sent out, um, to you guys, did they go to the board or, the, or did they just go to management? They just went to management. Ah, okay. So in the future, um, mm -hmm. if we if we copied the board as well with the drafts, that would probably be a quick fix on that, huh? Well, I think at least the person who's doing the outside funds mm -hmm. and that's uh, mm -hmm. oversight on my part this year. So next year we work with Jill and the board too if they want. Yeah, I was thinking that the board, or you know, at least you, Jill, would have would have seen um, seen the drafts. Uh, but yeah, happy to copy you on a future, you know, correspondence. Right, you're still the. I'm assuming you'll be the trustee next year. Um, that way, you see everything before everything goes final. John has a question. I have a quick question um, for Tyler, or maybe also input from Zoe. The, is there a, the last organization that I ran was 10 times bigger than the town and had one tenth the number of accounts, roughly. So it was sort of a hundred times less complicated. Yep. Is there, a, is there a way, without getting into the details, but just broadly speaking, is there a way to dramatically simplify what we're doing and still have good control over our money and so forth? Or is that something that for whatever reason, the uniqueness of Woodstock or, or municipal accounting or whatever it is, is that not an aspiration that we should worry about? If, if the answer is no, this is how every town looks, it's just horribly complicated on a small operation then fine, then we won't try. But if the answer is yes, there is a way to significantly simplify it, it might be really hard work or take a long time, then we could have a follow-up conversation maybe with your input or Eric, you know, you may have some ideas, Eric. But I just wanna know whether or not we should have it as an objective as a town to dramatically simplify this complexity. Because from what I've seen from other operations, again, that are much bigger, much more complicated, the accounting of them is much faster and the and the kind of issues and work that we have that Zoe has to do in order to make it all legal and work is so much higher than what I've seen in other situations. But maybe that's just the nature of anyway. So that's my question. Should we? Is there a way to radically simplify? Uh, John, I can take this. Um, this is something Zoe and I have talked about since I started three months ago. It's one of our goals. Uh, we've had discussions about how to do this. Um, so it is something we're looking forward to that we want to do. Um, it is just a timing issue. Uh, obviously, you find a time to go through some of these accounts to make the changes. Um, it's also unraveling years of this and making sure what you do going forward works. Um, 
And this is not how other municipalities look, at least that I've been involved in. It's, it's been much more simpler. Uh, some of that is the village and the town being coexisting and the funds going back and forth that creates some of that issue. Um, so that's part of it. Um, part of it's the power of network, you know, and, and what that allows us to do and not allow us to do. Um, so it's a combination of things, um, but it is something that Zoe and I have talked about a lot that we're looking forward to doing. Uh, Ty and I were talking earlier about some changes we could make as well. So it is something we're looking forward to doing and hopefully can start the process soon. Are there any other questions from any board members of the audience? No? Um, so that's it. Tyler, thank you very much for coming out. We all appreciate it, um, answering our questions. Um, and we appreciate all the work you and your firm have done over the last year and the previous years. And uh, we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Tyler. Thank you, Zoe. Yes, thank you, Zoe. <laughs>